Alright, so I, I got a customer that gave me this Magnavox TV to look at. It is a model number. You can see it. 37 M is in Michael, F is in Frank, 321 D is in Denver, forward slash 37. Right. And so far, I just plugged it in and the power light just blinks. And the screen also has a quick blink. You can see that. Let's hit the power button to have it. Yeah, hit the power button and no response, just blinks. Alright, so as far as getting it off the stand, there was these two long screws. Um, one right there, same on the other side, and then you just pull the TV up and off it. Alright, so next thing I want to do is take these two Phillips head screws out um, to get the sound bar off and make sure you disconnect the wires from the TV. Just push on those tabs and open it up. Alright, now you can get the sound bar off. Alright, so I had these. Um, 17, 17 longer screws there, all the way around the edge of the TV, and this one little short screw, um, right there that I had to take out, and then, and then these two, uh, knobs for the TV stand, right there, and there, to take out, and then this outside cover will pop off. We just gotta find a good place to pull on it. And then you gotta look up for that coax. It hangs up there. Alright, take a quick inventory of what I had to do here. Took out that screw, that screw, and I had to take out um, this one and this one that was holding this in and had to move it out of the way so that I could get to that one and the same thing on the other side and those two, I had to move that and then I could get to this one and then and that one and that one I unplugged cable that went down to there. That one. Unplug that cable. Unplug that cable. Unplug this little bad boy. Which went right down. Right down there. Unplug that. Unplug this one which went right there. And unplugged one that went right there which was I'm sorry, I unplugged that one which went right there, unplugged this one which went right there. Alright, and you do not need to take any of these screws out right here at the moment. Um, this whole thing will lift off with the wires that we unplugged. That just get your other screws out of the way. Okay, so let's pop this thing out. Make sure your cables don't snag anything and rip off. And this is what it looks like underneath. Okay, so I found the problem. And all I need to do is take these four screws out. Right, right there, those four. And you just need to twist this a little. And then it will eventually come up. And then, right there, that IC7003, you look 
the top of it's all bubbled up and burnt out there. And that's your problem and then just need to replace that. I'll give you the part number here when I figure it out. Alright, so if you weren't able to read the part number on that IC that we uh, just replaced, it's right there. The uh, manufacturing part number is L as in Leopard, 5973, D as in Dog, and uh, it cost uh, almost nine dollars for the cost of the part plus shipping and handling so not too bad and this is where I ordered the part from Mauser Electronics so just www.mauser.com also I noticed this pad right here is actually right on top of the that IC so Make sure you clean all the debris off of that because it might cause a short when you go to put it back together if you don't. Alright, so as you can see I just took the big heat sink off on the top so I can get to this. See here, I'm going to take that off and I'll uh, show you how I'm going to do it if you want to see. Alright, so typically I would blob a bunch of solder on one side and then lift it up and then do the same with the other side and get it off. But this this IC is glued down really good. Um, so I'm just going to have to pick each pin up one at a time and uh, <clears throat> hopefully I won't break anything or any other components around it. Alright, that one broke off. I got that side done. Time to break everything else on the other side. Alright, on the other side now. The third one off, and the fourth one is off on this side. Just need to get the stupid thing to come off the board now. Part of it came off, just this, got this little pad left down there. Alright, so it looks like this, uh, this IC was so hard to get off because there's a, a large pad on the bottom of it that solders to the board. I'll, I'll try to get that off and uh, hopefully it will go successfully. Alright, so I got this IC off. And the way I was able to do it with just a regular soldering iron was to um, heat up each pin one at a time and, and lift it up with a pick. And then with this, either a soldering pick or a dental pick. I use this right here. Uh, pried each one up one at a time. I did lift this pad, but it, does, it doesn't go to anything. And then uh, I had to break the top off in order to get to the the pad that solders down to the circuit board here under this pad um, in order to get to the IC part of it. And then I put the soldering iron on that and it just came right up. So there's a solder pad underneath that solders to the IC and I ohmed this to a bunch of different spots around here and 
I cannot find where this goes anything so I don't really think it's necessary to re-solder this big pad onto the bottom other than maybe um, some heat transfers what it's there for to keep the IC cool I'm not 100% sure not really not really equipped to be soldering underneath an IC like that uh, getting the board hot enough with a air gun and then soldering it uh, so I'm leaning towards not soldering it on so let's put it on without soldering it and see what happens alright got it all back uh, on uh, that trace that went the second one over here that came off I just left it off I did not uh, try to figure out a way to get the pad underneath the solder I just I just put some solder on the pad enough to where it kinda touched the bottom of this and then soldered this bad boy down and just put it back together and give it a shot alright got everything back in let's unplug it in and see what happens <laughs> Alright, the power light came on. And there it is. TV works. So, just something else I noticed on this TV it gets these vertical lines and just squeezing on the, on the screen, it'll change the brightness and the, it'll also make it go away. Looks like there's a bad connection back there somewhere on the screen, but eventually if you squeeze on it in the right place it'll just disappear. So it may may not even be an issue and will go away once the uh, um, once the back of the TV is put back on. So we'll see. Alright, so I got the back panel on and all the screws tight and all the vertical lines that were popping up are now gone and uh, they haven't come back so pretty sure just having that back panel on and really tight got rid of those vertical lines